Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here, introducing this week's Game of the Week, which will be The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. This is the hack and slash action RPG that is being developed and published by NeoCore Games, who also made the King Arthur role-playing war game series. Now here in this first video, I'm going to show you some introductory gameplay, as well as give you my initial thoughts on The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. And then throughout the course of the week, we'll go more in-depth as to the game's systems and how the game develops until we finally wrap up with a final thoughts video. So we're going to start off here with character creation. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. There's really not much choice that you have in the matter. You are making a Van Helsing character. You're playing as the son of Van Helsing, so male is the only option. Uh, you do get to pick the name here, and he will be named Force, of course. A few different difficulty options with the casual, normal, hard, and heroic. There's also hardcore characters, which, as you are familiar with in most uh, action RPGs, the hack and slash of the hack and slash variety, hardcore characters means if you die once, then that is that. We're just going to stick on the normal difficulty, though, for the sake of this playthrough. I'll go ahead and hit create. Now, there is some customization option that comes in the form of uh, being able to select sort of a color, uh, a color scheme for your outfits. Now, when you pick up gear, that is going to change uh, the the way your character is represented, like when you pick up new weapons and when you pick up new capes and a hat and stuff, there's a visual difference, but it looks like you get to pick a general color scheme uh, if you so desire, which I will be doing. Let's try to find something. So as you can see, you can choose the intensity there and then you can basically choose a combination of colors. That is actually kind of really funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. That looks great to me. All right, so here is Force, our Van Helsing character, and let's jump into the game, starting off with a lovely cinematic. Single player is my option. It all began with a call for help. A letter from Borgovia addressed to Van Helsing. The great monster slayer, my father. He doesn't take cases anymore, but I am a hunter too. So I set off on a journey with Lady Katarina, my remarkable companion. I'm an expert on the supernatural, and I seem to be drawn to it. Occasionally events get out of control, and then we have to leave in quite a hurry. Sometimes it's Katarina's fault. She can be quite reckless at times. Still, she always helps me save the day. And she also happens to be a ghost. My father rescued her from Borgovia, and she has been bound to serve our family ever since. Katarina often complains about it, but I think she really likes the thrill of the adventure. She is a charming soul, but she also has a darker side. Good. It comes in helpful when I'm in danger. Somewhere along the way, we slowly learned to work together. And finally, in the cold rain of Venice, we became a team. The last leg of the journey was by sea. Apart from the Kraken, the pirates, and the storms, it was mostly uneventful. I had time to ponder my mission. Once, Borgovia was a dark place where monsters lived. Long ago, my father defeated the immortal kings, created a peace treaty, and entrusted the land to some enlightened individuals. What could have happened there? What could be even more frightening than the reign of monsters? The closer we drew to Borgovia, the more confusing the rumors became. The land behind the Thunderhead Mountains was wrapped in mystery. As our carriage approached the mountain pass, I had a sense of foreboding. It didn't really surprise me when I heard an explosion. The adventure has just begun. Ooh, all right, so there's the backstory. Uh, just as a quick recap, you're playing as the son of Van Helsing. Uh, you've been sent on a mission to Borgovia, and you are with your sidekick, who goes by the name of Lady Katarina. She is a ghost, and she is your companion throughout this mission. So we're going to be starting off here in Borgovia. Bunch of background noise. Uh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> so character banter plays a big role in this game, which is the discussion between you and Katarina. So this is how they welcome folk around here. Yes. Why? It is an ancient and venerable tradition. 
So sort of this, this back and forth banter between uh, Katarina and Van Helsing, which is your name, by the way. So the son, you're the son of Van Helsing, but you're also named Van Helsing. Uh, talk about confusing. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really funny, uh, funny back and forth dialogue there uh, between those two characters that takes place throughout the course of this game. Uh, now we're starting off obviously here at the very beginning. So we're b being introduced to tutorials uh, such as uh, new items in the inventory. Uh, Q is for health potions, E is for mana potions you get the basic uh, attack with left mouse button and uh, right mouse button and then you can also switch between uh, different styles of weapons but we've got the inventory option now so we're going to go ahead and hit i bring up the inventory uh, a new piece of gear which is going to add uh, some protection once we equip it so there we go we've got better protection now from this item so when you mouse over an item which is pretty much standard nowadays in uh in action rpgs you're going to see a comparison between the one that you have equipped and the one that you're uh potentially looking to equip and uh obviously a really nice feature to have okay so let's go ahead and go forward as we continue here again with the introduction to the game so we've got basic ranged attacks now i just want to preface this by saying i have covered this game i covered it a few weeks ago it was a preview build that i was looking at which essentially consisted of the first act in the game now that the full game is here um, i am still showing you the basic introductory but we're also going to go much further in depth uh, throughout the course of the week so if you if you already saw that basic introduction uh if you already saw that initial video then this video might not provide much information for you um, or at least new information but if you just want to see more um, more van helsing gameplay then certainly stick around here uh, but all the basics that i covered in that first video are still going to be present here uh, the interesting thing though is that there's actually a lot of really deeper systems in this game there's even like a uh, a base a base defense system sort of like a tower defense uh, mini game in this game which i'm excited to show you guys which will be in a follow-up video <laughs> The bandits blew up the bridge. How terrible. Oh my. That was stupid. I'm impressed, actually. They do have a sense of theatrics. We could still fly over the chasm. Really? Oh, right. Uh, sometimes I forget how human you are. Oh, that Katarina. Normal pathway there. Oh, that Katarina, she's so sassy. All right, we've got extra DPS from that sword, so we're going to constantly be picking. I can't believe the color scheme that I picked. That's hilarious. Um, so I kind of prefer to play this game, uh, at least when I initially played it, as a melee character. So that's probably what I'm going to stick to here. Um, we're going to stick to that. And what I can do, actually, is we can go ahead and... Um, we can go ahead and have Katarina take take a back seat there, so we'll do that. But first, we have leveled up, so we get to pick our skill points. Um, so the first thing that you get to choose here is you get to choose what attribute you want to increase. There's the body, dexterity, willpower, and luck. Now, because I'm going for melee focus, I get extra melee damage from the body, uh, and I'll, I also get extra hit points. So this is the one that I'm pretty much going to be spamming points into. Uh, the other attributes, dexterity, is going to give you increased rain damage and dodge value. Willpower is increased mana points and spell power. And luck is increased gold find, magic find, dodging, and uh, let's see, increases the damage dealt by critical hits. So those are the attributes here within this game. And then I also get to select a skill point now we started off with a base skill point in a basic attack uh, basic melee attack which is the strike as well as the basic range attack which is the shoot so that's just default there but beyond that you get to select how you want to customize your character now i'm going to go with a melee focus so i'm going to be focusing in the mystic warrior tree the Oculus Hunter tree is the ranged focus tree. There's also some magic attached to it, a few magical spells. But again, there's the, the range increase abilities here. And then the Mystical Warrior, he again is also melee, but he's got some magic uh, capabilities as well. And then some uh, additional, looks like these are passive skills over there on the right hand side and i believe this range tree has passive skills on the right hand side as well yes it does and then we've got tricks and auras uh, that's a another system here if you notice right down over here there's the healing ability that i have uh, so this is a separate system of skills that you pick up throughout the course of the game and for example here uh, we've got this rampage passive skill which increases uh, my critical damage a multiplier as long as i have max rage so there's a rage system, it's a resource system in addition to the mana system, and then of course we've got the health bar, uh, HP, mana, 
and then the rage system right here. So the rage system, you're basically using that to cast spells as well as mana or do specialty attacks uh, is what, how the rage system is consumed. But again, I've got this passive already here where if I've got max range, if I let it sit at the max range and I don't use it for special attacks, then I'm going to get increased uh, critical damage during that process. And you'll eventually unlock more auras again throughout the course of the game. Same thing with the tricks, which right now I've got this healing trick, which I can do with A. So it's going to do a little healing area around me, and it's got this short little cooldown here. There you go. Okay, so because I'm going melee focus, that is what we will level up points in. Um, I could go with a lightning strike, and that would allow me to get some paralyzation or paralyzing. This stuns enemies for one second. The targets are paralyzed. Okay, so we're going to go with this, actually. I'm going to put, I've got three points. We're going to put one point into lightning strike, which will actually bind that to my right mouse button right now. And we're also going to put points into Paralyzed Strike. I'm going to put one point into Paralyzed Strike, which will make it now so that when I hit with the Lightning Strike, the targets will be paralyzed for two seconds. So that's great. And then I'm also going to put an extra point in Strike, which will increase its uh, damage. So right now it's 5 to 8 damage. I increase it. It goes to 6 to 10. Next to level up 7 to 11. And that continues to increase. It's also based off of a percentage of your melee weapon damage, which is increased by increasing my body attribute. Okay, so we've got that secondary skill right now, which is located right over there. And that is that. We can go ahead and exit out of this. And I actually quickly want to check here. So we've got the skills. There's also a perk system, although we don't have those available at the moment. And there's the map right there. That's wonderful. You guys know what a map is. And there's also some achievements right there. Okay. So it's telling me right now I now have a secondary skill, which with a right click I can activate. And when you have multiple secondary skills available, you get to choose which one you want to go where. And then we've got also these... Um, these additional power-ups here which increase uh, which allow you to allow you to do a special modifier to your attacks so for example the power-up that I have right here for my basic strike is allowing me to stun a individual target now I can increase that by hitting two You're gonna notice it gets pumped up there up to three times so that's gonna go from I can clear that as well so right now for example if I hit it once we're gonna use up some of my um, Excuse me. I think I can also hit it's like left control or left alt to clear that. There we go. Left uh, left control is what it is. So if I hit two uh, three times, okay, let's just look at the base one. So a base strike, it's not going to do anything. But if I hit two once, it's going to get the modifier to stun for one second. I do it twice, stuns for two seconds, stuns for three seconds. Same thing over here. I can hit the modifier, stuns for two seconds, stuns for four seconds stuns for six seconds so there you go and then i can clear that again so as you see when i use it it's going to use up the rage now this doesn't actually get used until you attack so you see i just attacked that cleared had i hit someone they would have been stunned for that duration hope that makes sense to you guys i go into a little more detail uh in the other video as well so if you want to hear a little bit more about that definitely give a look to that checkout video so I can just do a basic attack with a lightning strike and it's not going to stun. It's only going to stun if I spend a point in the power up, which will then apply a stun to those targets. You see that guy, that wolf right there was incapacitated for a moment. Actually, to be more exact, he was incapacitated for two seconds uh, because I applied the stun, the stun power up to that lightning strike. So yes, that is how that power up system works. And um, although you at any given time will only ha have two spells t attached to the melee or ranged attacks, you've got those, uh, those increased benefits from the modifier system. So I'm going to put three points into this, and I'm going to stri strike these guys so everyone affected is stunned for six seconds. Look how long. He's still stunned there. And then uh, finally he comes out. And the other guys just straight up died from the damage. But those who don't die right away do, uh, do see that stun duration. Little shrines here. This one gives me 25% bonus to damage. Oh, how wonderful. And Katarina, uh, she is currently set to be a melee companion. Let's set her to range. So she will now attack enemies from a range. Besides uh, those two stances, melee and range, you can also tell her to be inactive in ghost form, in which case you will get increased resistances, which uh, based on my prior playthrough of the preview build, it's probably what I'll end up doing, uh, simply because I found her to be rather useless in combat, but maybe that's just because I was specking her incorrectly. So we'll see what I do this time around, though. So we can do a few lightning strikes. 
just to do some base lightning damage. And then we can also get the stun down so that these guys aren't all hitting me at once. I wish there was some sort of animation that played over their heads when they were stunned rather than just standing there. Because it's sometimes sort of hard to tell. I mean, if they're not attacking you, then they're obviously stunned. But, alright, we're gonna... This is a treasure goblin, essentially. As you notice, as I continue to hit him, he drops things, uh, a la the same system, essentially, that we saw in Diablo 3. Alright, so we get a few better items here. That's, uh, hmm. A little more DPS, so I'll just take that. And we can give Katarina items as well. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna give her the sword. Chest piece. And you can also give her rings and an amulet which I don't have any of those available for her at the moment. Also a whole component system, that will be something safe for a future video, just because it's not gonna, right now it's not gonna do much good for us to look at it. We don't have many components, but as I progress through the game, I'll definitely, oh, that guy pulled me in with a little, uh, all right, I see, I see what you're doing here. I'll take my stun there, buddy. Ooh, and a great sword, I love it. Great sword, we got increased reputation, we also leveled up, so a whole bunch to look at right now. Uh, so first let's do the reputation. Because we reputationed up, we get a perk. Uh, you will unlock perks as you progress the game. Right now we've got access to these six. I get to choose which one I want, and I get a, just a flat benefit from it. So Berserker, 10% damage while max range. Uh, minus respawn cooldown for Katarina, plus HP regeneration for Katarina. Two levels of arcane healing spell. Uh, plus 10% efficiency of potions. The first attack has a 10% critical chance against every enemy. When you die, you merely become in incapacitated for 4 seconds. Hero receives additional inventory page. Let's go with, uh, I like the 10% critical chance uh, against every enemy. The first attack against every enemy. That's good. So we're going to learn that perk. One perk available. Bam. Perk learned. Now I have that. These are additional available perks. We'll get more and more of them as we move throughout the game. And then we get to whenever we get a, an available perk point, which you get by increasing reputation and stuff, uh, you'll get to pick another one that you want. Okay. So that is that. We also leveled up. So I will spend, let's go with a, I could go with, uh, let's see, some more of these. We're going to spend one point into each of these. So I can get, I can add the power up of ignoring Ignoring physical resistance and more melee damage, plus the power up of more melee damage. Those are two of my three points, and then use my third point to increase the basic attack. So now I have got additional power ups available. So I can again, up to three times, choose how I want to spend these so that my next attack will gain that power up. So I can go one, two, three, and spend one point into each of these, or I can go three, three, three to spend three points into that, two, two, two to spend three points into that, one, one, one to spend three points into that. Once I hit, the, the rage will be used up and I will get the power up benefit from however I decided to lay that out. And then also we've got a, five more stats. I'm gonna throw that right into body. I think I might just go all body for tons of HP and tons of melee damage. It's probably how I'm gonna play this character. Not really gonna focus on much of anything else. We've got an amulet here for extra dexterity, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, these guns are better than ones I have. This weapon, nice. Extra DPS plus poison damage and mana for every enemy killed. Plus it's a huge two-handed weapon. I guess it's actually still one-handed, but <laughs> it's baller looking, so awesome. All right, so we're gonna go with a mass stun here from that strike, so look at that. We've got those few guys stunned, and we're gonna go with another one just to sort of mitigate some of this damage here. Just using up my rage to keep these guys stunned to stop them from hitting me so hard. Now let's go ahead and go three, th all right, let me show you a basic melee attack. That's 24 damage. Let me go 3-3-3 to get 150% more damage. 53. Wait, was that really that much more? 44. Okay, that was a crit. Basic attack is 30. That's That was a crit too. Damn it, I want to try to show you. Well, it looks like it's more damage, so it is more damage. Obviously, that's how that whole system works. All right, we're going to hit Q here to go ahead and heal up. And still no sign of a decent aim. And wolves, no. All right, so we're going to go... 2-2-2, two, 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 and then stun with our right attack. And Katarina has leveled up as well. Excellent. So we get to now spend some points to level her up. Now there is multiplayer in this game. You can play this with other people. I believe it is... I believe it is a four-player multiplayer, which means you can play with three other people. I believe that is the case. Not positive, though, so... 
Don't quote me. I'll find that out for further videos. Don't worry. Okay, so Katarina leveled up. Let's go ahead and give her some stuff so we can increase her basic stats. Um, let's see what benefits. And then we also have skills that we can uh, give, uh, give for her as well that can give us benefits. So... Let's see. For Katarina, we will increase her melee damage with body as well as bonus to her hit points and defenses. Dexterity for her will give her increased rain damage plus dodge value. Willpower for her will give her increased resistance to all attacks. And luck for her will give her... Alright. How luck value will increase your chance to find gold? Is that for me? Or her? It looks like it's for me. I get benefit from her luck. Oh, damage she deals. High luck value increases your chance of finding gold, magic items, and also your companion's dodge. It also increases the damage she deals with critical hits. So I get increased gold find by increasing her luck. So I could just have her be a passive companion in which she's not attacking, she's not engaging in combat. In this form right here, um, she can't fight in ghost form, nor can she be attacked. But I'm pretty sure then I still get benefits from her passives. So maybe I'll just give her, maybe I'll just go all luck with her and give her skills that just help me. For example, let's see, so I've got two points here. This one costs four points. All right, so let's see this one. Um, adds 4% Paralyze on Katarina's attacks, heals Van Helsing for his max HP with each strike. Drain life force from her foes. Okay, so she attacks and drains life force. And what are these ones right here? Katarina's presence creates a faint spectral nimbus around you, which deflects some of the incoming attacks. So this this gives me increased uh, defenses. So this helps me. So we're just going to spend points into that. Wonderful. So I'll spend points into that. I will put her, put her in a... Uh, a ghost form, so I get increased resistances as well, and she is not in danger of getting killed. She's also not helping me in combat, but I get benefits. And then I can also, here's the whole uh, item collection system where I can tell her what I want her to pick up. So I'm going to tell her to pick up gold, health potions, mana essences, and normal items as well. There you go. So she's going to pick up all that stuff. The only thing that I need to pick up is magic, rare, and epic items. It's a really cool, I really like the companion system in this game. And we're gonna go into town now to get a little bit of story stuff, and then we're gonna go to one more combat area, and then at, after that point, I think we're gonna wrap up this video. Again, the, the point was to just show you some of the basic uh, early level stuff, and give you a basic introduction to the game before we go into those deeper systems Stop later right on. There. Easy lad, we're friends here. They all say that, but I won't let in any dangerous fiends on my watch. No, sir. How? dare you. I'm going to tear you apart, and then I'll teach you some manners. No, I, I didn't mean you, my lady. The undead nobility of Borgova are always welcome to haunt here, but you, with the Van Helsing hat, we don't like your sword here, <laughs> with your weapons and bad manners. It's kind of funny. I'm a monster hunter. Of course you are, or you are just a troublemaker. Oh, you don't have to worry about my uh, servant. I keep him on a short leash. Katarina. Fight you, my lady. You can pass, and your manservant too. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Fine. Don't even thank me. I don't know. I, I like the banter between those two. I think it can be quite comical at times. Okay, so here we are now in the town of Markovna. And we'll be picking up some quests here before we go on to the next area. What is that? You didn't recognize it? That's the ink. The dark material of creation and dreams. But that's a myth. Borgovia is the only place where the ink leaks through the cracks of the world. So you can enter the ink here? Yes, and then you can travel below or behind this world and appear at certain places. That's the ink walk. Oh, you mean teleport. That is such a cliched word. Oh, breaking that fourth wall. Okay, so we've got a couple of quest givers here. Um, this is the waypoint system in this game. Once you pick up waypoints, you'll be able to go to and from them freely. We've got a couple of quests here. First, speaking with Captain Ilya. Welcome, stranger, my lady. And a good day to you. We must get to Borgova. The bridge has collapsed. 
Then you need to talk to the village mayor, who knows the pathway through the forest. And where do I find him? He went out to investigate a wagon that got lost on the forest road with some valuables. He hasn't returned yet. It's never that easy, my dear Van Helsing. Okay, wonderful. So we completed that quest there. We have got ourselves a level up. I will continue to dump points into the basic attack. And actually, we can go even further now. Um, hmm. Well, I'll worry about that later. And I will spend points in the body. Katarina has also leveled up, so we will increase her luck. Plus give her some more of this skill. And that will be it for now. Okay, so... I will just quickly go to the next area. I'd like to show you a little bit more combat. I know I've also got a quest in there, but I'll pick that up in my own time because I'd just like to wrap up this video with some combat as I give you my initial thoughts on Van Helsing. So beyond the bit that you've seen me play here, uh, I have also played, I played the preview build of this game for about an hour and a half to two hours before I made that last video covering this game. And I have to say, my initial thoughts are quite positive. I'm actually, I'm really liking this as a, uh, as a hack and slash action RPG. Now, how it holds up in the long haul, I don't know that yet. I will not be able to tell you that until, you know, I spend some more time with the game. But I'm excited to do that. I think especially for a budget title at only $15 that this is a pretty cool little game. And one of my favorite things about this game is the, the atmosphere, uh, the setting in it, and the, oh boy, a big dude here. And the, oh, a couple of big dudes, okay. And the audio, I think the music in this game is fantastic. I really, really like it a lot, so. Yeah, but besides that, the uh, the combat generally feels all right. It's, um, you know, not nearly as fluid as the combat was in another comparable hack and slash action RPG, being Diablo 3. Uh, you know, whatever your final thoughts on that game are, the combat in that game is amazing. And this isn't quite as visceral, it's not quite as impactful, uh, but it's still pretty decent. I think it's comparable to most of the other hack and slash action RPGs on the market. Uh, I feel that the combat feels very similar in terms of its the actual fighting with enemies. It feels very similar to what you got in Path of Exile. Uh, Path of Exile is a much different game. It's a class-based game. You know, there's a lot more spells and abilities, but in terms of the actual engaging with enemies, uh, it feels feels like it's the, it's got that same general feel to it. So, there you go. Those are my initial thoughts on the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. I think it's great so far. I'm excited to continue to dive into it and show you, show you guys some further coverage. So stay tuned as we continue our Game of the Week coverage of the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. Also, there is like a tower defense system in this game, which I'm excited to show you as well. The wagon was attacked by the soldiers. And werewolves. No. The distribution of the paw prints is all wrong. They just rushed in and out. Did you just say distribution? And this track here? Is deeper. The beast was carrying someone. I'm impressed. As you should be. Right. Let's go find us a werewolf lair. Alright guys, thank you so much once again. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning. Man, I'm stylish. Look at that coat.